Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. A test in New Zealand recently made headlines for leaving 15-year-olds in tears because they thought the problems were too hard to solve. One of the problems involved a kite. I actually recently made a video presenting a solution, which is probably what the test makers intended the solution to be. But in the discussion of that video, the problem turned out to be much more complicated and interesting than I originally anticipated, and there actually was a flaw in my solution. For those who haven't seen the first video, I'm going to first go over the problem, then present my solution, and then show you why there's a flaw in the solution and how we can get to the correct answer. So let's get started by presenting the problem. The kite GDBE is placed in the square ACHF. DG is equal to GB is equal to EG. Calculate the size x of angle DBE. Justify your answer with clear geometric reasoning. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So here's how I solved the problem, which is probably what test makers intended. The flawed method I used was to find a 30-60-90 triangle, and that's not the flawed part. The flawed part is how I found it. So I got started by drawing the diagonals of the kite DE and GB and letting them meet at point I. Since GDBE is a kite and DG equals EG, diagonal GB perpendicularly bisects diagonal DE. I then said, this means GB equals DE equals the length of the square. This would then mean the following equivalences. In particular, DG is equal to 2 times DI, and GE is equal to 2 times IE. This means triangles DIG and EIG are 30, 60, 90 right triangles because the right triangles which have a hypotenuse, which is two times one of their legs. The angle that's opposite the leg that's shorter has 30 degrees. Therefore, angles DGI and EGI would be 30 degrees. From there, I said, let's look at the isosceles triangles DGB and BGE. Now, since DG equals GB equals EG, these triangles are congruent isosceles triangles by side angle side. Hence, the remaining angles that are not equal to 30 degrees will all be equal to each other, and this will bisect angle DBE. So each of these angles will be equal to half of X. Furthermore, we have the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So we have two of these remaining angles plus 30 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. These angles are equal to each other. And we can then solve that two of these angles is equal to 150 degrees and two of these angles will equal X. So 150 degrees is the answer I got and that is the correct answer. But I'm telling you this is a flawed method to find the answer. Why is that? Where is the flaw in this proof? So here's the problem. Let's go back to the diagonals of the kite. I said looking at this diagram, we could conclude that GB equals DE equals the length of the square. It looks like GB is parallel to the sides AF and CH, so it looks like it's exactly equal to the side of the square. Furthermore, the same thing for DE. It spans the square and it looks like it's perpendicular to the sides AF and CH, so you think these are the sides of the square and therefore they're equal to each other. But the diagram is specifically not to scale. So it's not a justified conclusion to say that GB equals DE equals the length of the square. In fact, this step turns out to be wrong. The kite could actually be rotated inside the square so the diagonals are not parallel or equal to the sides of the square. I thank Christopher Knight, Steve's Mathy stuff, and Joseph Lombardo for pointing out this particular flaw in the proof. 
Christopher Knight even went so far as to come up with a diagram to show how the kite could be rotated. So imagine the kite is actually rotated in the square like this. He actually presented values and showed that the lengths of the diagonal will actually be longer than the sides of the square. So it is not in fact true that GB equals DE equals the length of the square if the kite is actually off axis. The more remarkable part is that even if the kite is rotated, it still turns out that x is equal to 150 degrees. So since the answer is still the same, how can we fix the proof to show that x is 150 degrees? So what we need to show is that GB equals DE. The diagonals are equal to each other. It doesn't matter that the diagonals would have to be the length of the square, it just matters that the diagonals are equal to each other. So how can we prove that? We'll draw dj perpendicular to sides af and ch, and we'll also draw bk that's perpendicular to sides ac and fh. Now, we have two triangles that we will show are congruent by angle side angle. EJD is congruent to GKB by angle side angle. So why are these triangles congruent to each other? Well, one angle is congruent. Angle EJD is equal to angle GKB because both are right angles by construction. Next, side DJ is equal to BK because these are both equal to the square side length. We constructed these so that they're perpendicular to two sides of the square, so they'll be parallel to the other sides of the square. So we can say that dj equals bk equals the length of the square. What about the final angle? It's a little bit trickier. Angle edj is equal to angle gbk. The reason is because since gb and de, the diagonals of the kite, are perpendicular, they intersect perpendicular lines at the same angle. GB will intersect BK at the same angle that DE intersects DJ because DJ is perpendicular to BK. Now we can use the fact that the two triangles are congruent to say that their hypotenuses GB and DE will be equal to each other. Now that we know that the diagonals of the kite are congruent, we can then say, since we know dg is equal to gb equals eg from the given information, and we've shown that the diagonals are equal to each other, we can therefore conclude dge is an equilateral triangle. This means angle dge is equal to 60 degrees. Next, dgb and egb are congruent isosceles triangle by side, side, side. The sides dg GB and EG are all equal to each other, and the remaining sides are equal. DB is equal to BE because GDBE is a kite, and GD is equal to EG. So the remaining two sides will be equal to each other. Therefore, angle DGB is equal to angle EGB, which is equal to half of 60 degrees, which is 30 degrees. We can now proceed as before where we have the remaining angles are all equal to each other, and therefore they're all equal to half of x. And then we have the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, so we can then proceed to find that x is equal to 150 degrees, just like before. So the key part in this proof is that we have the diagonals are equal to each other, which then leads us to all these steps. They're not necessarily equal to the side of the square. There's also another way you could have solved this problem after figuring out the diagonals are equal and that angle DGE is 60 degrees. Since GD is equal to GB equals GE, we can draw a circle centered at G passing through points D, B, and E. These will be the radius of the circle. I thank Ali A for pointing this out in the comment. Now that we have a circle and we have a central angle, we don't actually even need the square to solve for angle x. Let's clean up our diagram a bit. We can now use the properties 
of central angles, inscribed angles, and arcs of a circle. I'll put a point P on the major arc of the circle so that I'll be able to write the major and minor arc and distinguish them. The entire measure of a circle is equal to 360 degrees. So the measure of arc DBE plus the measure of arc DPE is equal to 360 degrees. I've written M to mean the measure of the arc. Now the measure of arc DBE is equal to 60 degrees because the central angle is 60 degrees. So we substitute in that value, and that means the remaining arc, the measure of DPE, is equal to 300 degrees. So how can we figure out DBE? Well, the measure of angle DBE is equal to half the measure of the arc by the inscribed angle theorem. Thus, the measure of angle DBE is equal to 300 degrees divided by 2, which is 150 degrees, and that's equal to x. So we get to the same answer using the property of circles, and it's quite a remarkable way. I can't imagine the test examiners would have wanted this to be what students would have presented as the answer, but it is one way you could have come up with the answer that's slightly out of bounds from the original scope of the problem. So did you figure out the correct way to solve this problem, or were you like me and the many people who overlooked the mistake I made in the original proof? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. If you like this video, you can support me on Patreon, and you can check out my books, which are listed in the video description. You can also catch me either at Mind Your Decisions or at Presh Tallwalker on social media, depending on the site.